the shadow cage. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a quick summary of the story. So let's begin. So on the first page of the story, we get introduced to Ned, Ned Chalice. And while he's out on his tractor, he comes across a little green stoppered bottle. He decides to pick the bottle up and though it's not very attractive and it's very dirty with some black and scaly stuff inside, he pops it into his pocket and takes it home. His daughter takes a little shine to this bottle and decides to keep it. We also, at this point, get introduced to a new character called Kevin. Kevin is Lisa's cousin. He too takes an interest in this bottle. And even though Lisa does not want to give him the bottle, he manages to persuade her. And for his week's pocket money and a little china doll, Lisa then finally agrees to give Kevin the bottle. He can keep it for half a day only. So when they meet at school, Lisa hands the bottle over and immediately Kevin puts the bottle in his pocket. And as he's running over to join his friends on the climbing frame, he realises it would be very easy for a bottle to be smashed whilst in his trouser pocket. So what he does, he decides to hide it. And in the playground, there are some tall tussocks of grass. And what he does is he hides the bottle in the grass so that he can retrieve it later. And off he trots to go and play with his friends. Now, considering the fuss that he had made about this bottle, he forgets about it completely. And it isn't until he's on his way home and he's going past the chalice, chalice's house that he remembers that he has forgotten this bottle. And he's also very concerned at how cross Lisa would be once she finds out that she ha he hasn't got it for her. Now this concern and worry about the bottle eats at him. And throughout the day, he's worried about it. At tea time, he's worried about it. And when he goes home to bed, he's still worrying about this bottle. What can he do? How can he get it back? And even when he's asleep, this worry seems to nag in his dreams. And all of a sudden he wakes up. And whilst the rest of his family are asleep and it's silent, he decides that now is a good time to go and get the bottle. And if he does, he can give it to Lisa in the morning and all will be forgiven. So he decides to get up and get dressed and off he runs towards school to go and get this bottle. And as he passes his cousin's house, his uncle, Ned, wakes up. He hears the footsteps. And this leads him feeling very uneasy to the point where even his wife wakes up and says, what are you doing? Where are you going? Ned decides to try and go back to sleep, but his eyes remain open. Meanwhile, Kevin's on his way to school. And at half past 11, he walks down the street in the moonlight, climbs the school gate, and finds the bottle. There it is, his fingers close on it. It was as if it was waiting for him. Now at home at the Chalice's house, Ned still can't sleep and something's troubling him. And we find out that the fact that he'd found this bottle by burnt house is very significant to the story. And at this point, we're not told as a reader why, but it's significant enough to keep Ned Chalice awake. And in fact, not only that, he then decides that actually 
Kevin, who he knows now has bottle, could even be in danger. So he gets dressed, gets onto his bicycle and sets out off into the night in search of Kevin. At this point, Kevin is in the school playground and the church tower strikes midnight. Kevin begins to feel quite uneasy now. And as he's standing in the playground, he starts to hear a whistle, which should be a very unusual sound at this time of night. But it was almost like he was waiting for this sound. And as he runs off across the playground, he notices the climbing frame and its shadows. And the shadows of the climbing frame seem to form the cage and like a fool, he steps into it. Meanwhile, Ned is still on search for Kevin and he approaches the school. Kevin is still stuck in his cage of shadows and he can hear the whistles getting closer and closer from different directions, moving in slowly. Ned is also moving in slowly and getting closer to Kevin. And he notices Kevin in the middle of the playground, standing, waiting, with his hands writhing in front of him. Kevin can hear the whistles coming in closer and closer, but he can't see what's making the noise. And he, he suddenly feels this darkness closing in on him and he screams. Ned is there though and he shouts, I've got you. And when he shouts that, Kevin is now able to drop the bottle and it lays in the playground, very uh, insignificant looking. Ned decides to take Kevin home, and, but just before he does, he picks up the bottle. And though he wants to smash it or get rid of it, he doesn't. He puts it in, in his saddlebag on his bicycle and takes it home. He takes Kevin back and then he also then returns home himself and tells his wife all about what had happened. And at that point, Ned Chalice decides to take the bottle to the museum. A few days later, or possibly weeks later actually, Ned returns home with the bottle in a box. Kevin is also there having tea with his cousin. And this is where the story unfolds, the story behind the bottle. The bottle was found by Burnt House, which is on Whistler's Hill. And rumour has it that during the Victorian times, a very old woman lived there. And this woman was believed to be a witch because she would dig up roots and toadstools and catch rats and toads and make weird ointments and powders and cast spells and call up spirits. And she was not a popular figure in the village. And on the day that she died and as she lay in a coffin, the villagers decided, because she was a witch, or what they believed was a witch, to burn her. And they took the thatch and the straw from the roof of her cottage and put it below her coffin and around her in order to burn her. And as they were doing this, all these jars and bottles fell from out of the roof where she had hidden them. The villagers were so freaked by this that what they did was burn the cottage down with the old lady with all her magic spells and bottles and jars. And the bottle that Ned Chalice had found in the field had obviously escaped somehow. And it's right at the end of the story that we find out that this bottle which had contained some black and scaly stuff, 
had been cleaned and emptied by the museum and taken to a hospital lab. And it's at this point we discover that it was in fact human blood. Now, does this prove that the old lady was a witch? And whose blood was it? It also leaves questions for us. Who are the whistlers? What are they doing? It also leaves us with questions about what happened to Kevin? Was he really trapped in a cage? But one thing is for sure. It answers one question. Why Whistler's Hill was called Whistler's Hill. It wasn't because the old lady's surname was Whistler. 